Hunter x Hunter, episode 3, Rivals x for x Survival. We finally passed the exam. For the exam. I guess we're all, we're still in the same country. How, how do countries work? I come to think of it, what even is a hunter? We haven't really established that. It's super vague so far. It's just that there's people hunting for the unknown and unlocking abilities. I'll take seven. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy, here we go. Watch out, Gon. And he just loves it, of course. You know, the opposite is true as well. My experience, actually, people coming from prosperous cities or countries, going to less prosperous places, just naturally creates some weirdness due to the financial incentives. It's hard to fully explain, but something you distinctly feel. There's a couple telltale signs, like, for example, haggling is, is really prevalent, and it takes work to buy things because the vendors start at just a really inflated price to anchor it, which, side note, actually means some people probably do buy at that price. But even after haggling, you're probably not getting local prices. Another telltale sign that can get really, really weird is the prevalence of working girls, if you know what I mean. Like, even going to a bar or club or something in places where there are a lot of relatively more financially well-off tourists, it becomes less likely that it's just students and workers going out to have fun and more likely that there's an expected financial transaction. Another thing is constantly being approached for goods and services. For me personally, while it's it's interesting as a, as a new experience. It's one of the downsides of traveling to certain places. It can be somewhat draining. It kind of wears on you if you're not looking for that kind of thing. <laughs> Luckily, it doesn't seem like Gon has much money to be swindled out of. <laughs> not that he would be swindled, I don't know. He seems pretty focused and oriented towards his compass. <laughs> Height, check, architecture, <laughs> I don't know. This is reminding me of Haikyuu when they were impressed by a five-story hotel. <laughs> What about this exam process so far has been ordinary? Everything's a sleight of hand. Do they want hunters? It's funny to compare like the, the different rituals, orientation rituals of the different shows. In Demon Slayer, it's like, oh, you have two arms. Here's a sword. There's a mountain of demon spiders that need clearing. Don't tell me your name. Just go. Best wishes for your extremely short career. This show, at least they're selecting for something, but what are they selecting for? They're selecting for ability to withstand bullshit. <laughs> Who has the most patience? Who can jump through the most obtuse loops? You, you would not. <laughs> exactly, that's part of the problem. This is a test. Okay, he did it for them. Oh, he, wait, so we're not getting a steak dinner? Yeah, that, that adds up. That makes sense. So nice. So pleasant. It's got a real attention to others. Next year, is he expecting him to fail? That's oh, an elevator. Our chances of a steak dinner are decreasing by the minute. Isn't there like a, an online guide for this? I must pay well. Yeah. Okay, okay. Starting to add up. Money and glory. Has anyone seen my daddy? <laughs> daddy went out for cigarettes 20 years ago. Oh, open passport. That's legit. Okay, that's cool. Can we get back to the, the money and travel? Mm, he makes a very compelling point. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just want someone to love me. Gon's the kind of kid that will just end up in it for love of the game. It's a colorful crew. One of them has a gun, I'm depending on her. Bro has no social anxiety whatsoever. I was gonna say, yeah, he's probably a professional test taker. Yeah, at what point did you hang it up?
at this point, you got to just wonder if he doesn't love the exam process. I had a close friend who was trying to get into Harvard Law and he tried three times. On his third attempt, I connected him with a friend of mine who actually was at Harvard Law for advice. He then reported he got in, but certain elements of what he was saying just didn't quite add up. And we started to get the suspicion that he was lying, maybe out of embarrassment or shame for our sakes. And then shortly after that, he just vanished from all of our lives, which makes me sad to this day. It was really bizarre. Like I've never experienced anything before that or since then. It's tough. One area that people don't don't talk much about is failure. You hear a lot about success because you hear from the winners. There are no clear guides or easy answers about how to deal with repeated failure. And you'll get very mixed takes. You know, some people believe that if it's really your dream, you never give up. I don't know if that's really great advice. I mean, sometimes there are signs in there. I'm more of a believer in the thing that you want, the thing you're fixated on as your goal is less important as the thing itself and more important as the symbol for you and what it means for you. That's the thing that needs to be explored. And there are always going to be multiple paths towards your own fulfillment. Like the circumstances speaking of like destiny and your natural calling, the element that's most important is you and your journey spiritually. It's like the saying, many roads, one path. But then again, man, March comes in like a lion, burning fields just haunts me. Like if you can do that and you make it to the top, despite those obstacles, I can't really say anything to take away from that. High risk, high reward. I've seen better Totos. This guy is missing a career or and a potential fortune as like a third party guide to the exam. He could be like the Kaplan of Hunter x Hunter. What am I looking at? Damn, he got thanos into flowers. This can't be legal. You're telling me this guy passed the mother or girlfriend riddle? Yeah, that's my question. Again, what are we testing for here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's at the top? Who gets to decide? This part of the exam. Don't trust them. Don't drink it. Nope. <laughs> of all the things he chose, he chose laxative. That's just evil. Not just a simple sleeping medication or, you know, something to make him drowsy. No, just laxative. Diarrhea. Leo, Leo. This one I got. Oh, it's Leo Rio, damn it. <laughs> that was off. Definitely gonna call him Leo Leo for this whole series. I recently finished Vinland Saga and there's this question of the crown and power corrupting. It's a very well-known saying and phenomenon that power corrupts. I would argue that power kind of just makes you more what you are and, you know, most people have natural corruptions already that are hemmed in by society just by the incentives of the world around them. But one thing that's less talked about perhaps is that I can't necessarily say it's a bigger corruption, but my hunch is that that's correct. People with zero power, I think, are often the most corrupt because of the bitterness that that breeds. There's sometimes a romanticization of people in dire situations and that trope can be real and beautiful if like there's a there's the corresponding great spirit underneath it. People end up being just wonderful and beautiful despite their circumstances, but there's a lot of real darkness to be found there as well. Just in general, desperation is one of the most dangerous conditions Someone who's failed the exam 35 times and watched others pass. I mean, not hard to imagine it being ultra bitter, ultra salty. <laughs> he tasted it. Gonja has other worldly levels of senses. Like, he just knows where people are, he has perfect vision, taste. <laughs> This kid's had a very active life. Boredom is a concept that doesn't exist for Gon. Salty much? We've seen him in the intro. Smart. I mean, it's actually impressive the level of dedication this guy has to this stupid plan. Like, he put the laxatives in and then sealed it. It's a can. Damn it, Nicholas. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. What do I feel like he would fit right in in Spy X Family Kids Academy? 
He can't even get poisoning, right? Damn, I underestimated Nicholas. Nicholas is the man. Looks can be deceiving. Nicholas is street smart. Yeah, stay salty. Hey, it's Pocket's kid. <laughs> this is laxative immune. Man, he's losing the exam, he's losing this poison strategy, and he's losing a lot of money on all these laxatives, presumably. It's a total loss. He's in the red. With laxatives? Don't want to know what that process was like. It was a very odd preoccupation. Oh, speaking of Spy X family, this guy's looking very elegant. I mean, the influence makes sense, right? Like, they both have X's. She's probably doing a physical exam at some point, I'm guessing. And if you don't have an extreme tolerance for bullshit, just leave now. After all the crap he went through to get here, no one is leaving. So elegant. I mean, why all the competition? Is there, there's no quota, right? It's just passing the exam. What happened to his mouth? I'm out. I'm out. Long distance run. I want to draw. And I'm not coming back next year. I'm gonna get an office job somewhere. Phase one is refreshing tunnel sprints. In all seriousness, though, that's a great test, not just of physical ability, but of mental fortitude. Physical activity runs are by far the hardest when you have no end, end point, clear end point. You do a mile run, you know, you know you have the mile. You can count down. If you're just following someone with no no idea of how long you're running, man, the, the mentality gets to you. That's really hard. That's actually a really good exam. What did you expect? <laughs> it's endurance. It's also... Mental willpower. Yes, exactly. What data can you calculate? Wow, they disqualified the guy who got turned into flowers and not the, the magician who murdered him? That's rough. Buddy. This is totally not connected to the show, but I never noticed this before. I thought about this before. It's interesting that in the credits they put the Korean names in English. <laughs> this whole exam mark is so it's so great in the most bizarre way. What is this world <laughs> that they're building? I mean, in it there's a lot of potential because the absurdist nature of it allows them to draw on anything. I mean, any idea goes. You have ninjas combined with computer nerds. There's a lightheartedness and a creativity that that allows that's really exciting. It feels like a breath of fresh air despite being what, 20 years old? And what's great about that too is it does not preclude heart. You know, that doesn't really matter. What I'm seeing from episodes like this one is that there's going to be a huge spectrum from the really deep. I mean, that's already been established, specifically, I think, by episode one, to the absolutely ridiculous. So it has the, the potential and energy to, like, have it all. Honestly, it's just a blast to watch. I mean, they were still in the early episodes. We haven't really gotten to, like, the, the true heart yet, because I know it's coming, and it's a, it's a fun ride in the meantime. I was thinking about Gon. Gon is very notable to me in that this is maybe the... the first time or he's the farthest in the spectrum of like he's really like a baby anime age is sort of be nothing like 12 could be 18 18 could be 45 in terms of human life and ability and accomplishments and things like that but he literally like looks feels talks like a little kid he's the 10 year old launching on his pokemon adventure there's a vulnerability that that naturally creates within me as a viewer despite the fact that he's not really all that vulnerable in terms of his his actions of what we've seen so far and his abilities like he's so overpowered in some in some ways like i've never seen somebody be more omniscient about their surroundings since Armin. But he's a little kid and I kind of want to protect him. Not Again, not that he needs it. Which is a unique experience for me. I mean, think about Deku, right? Deku's in high school, but like I look up to Deku. I don't think of him in the same light. Eren's a kid, but I mean, for him, I want to run away screaming. Gon's a like, baby. Actually, speaking of the show, maybe the closest I felt to this is Aang in The Last Airbender. Aang starts out as such a little kid. The more I think about it, the more I think there's a, a bunch of parallels between the two shows. Avatar also great at that extreme, you know, between like the deepest, most heartfelt, soul-crushing things that 
break you to the absurd and hilarious. And I suspect that's part of why that show is so universally adored across decades. I've heard that this show is not so much thought of as being in seasons, but is more of a longer thing and broken up into arcs. This arc has the extra difficult job of setting things up, but I'm really curious to see where it goes because there's still a little bit of amb ambiguity about what exactly hunters are, what they do, what their daily lives look like. And I think may there might be more to it, like some, I don't know, some bigger thing than just like it's an occupation. They're very selective, very secretive. Maybe there's a higher purpose or, or calling in there somewhere.